Well, good evening and welcome to Blitz 8. And the only thing that can make a rivalry better is when it's on display in the playoffs. Three weeks ago, after Portland prevailed at South Portland in the regular season finale, the teams met at Fitzy in the regional championship, the first playoff encounter in 20 years between the two schools. Pick up the action in this one. South Portland leading 7-6 in the second quarter. Bulldogs driving, but Kennedy Charles picked off by Ben Smith. He's going to take it back the other way and put the Red Riots in good field position. Next play, their star quarterback, Jalen Jackson, keeps it himself. Good decision, 35-yard touchdown run. Red Riots up 14-6. Bulldogs late in the half drive to midfield, fourth and one. Charles finds Andrew Brewer. Great catch, first down. From there, the ghost of Fitzpatrick Stadium on the Bulldogs' side. Charles takes off. He loses it, but right to Brewer, who's going to do the rest and take it in for the score. It's 14-12, South Portland. Bulldogs go for two. The razzle-dazzle. Charles to Regan Buck. The receiver hits Braden Wales for two. We have a 14-14 game at the half. In the third, Red Rides deep in their own end, and it's Charles. What doesn't he do? The pick six although it would come back due to an illegal block, but still Portland in great field position, and Charles punches it in from a couple yards out. Add the two-point conversion, 22-14 Bulldogs. Early in the fourth, South Portland answers. Jackson to freshman Darius Horton. What a catch, but they're denied the two-point conversion, and Portland keeps the lead 28-26, or rather 22-20. Then Charles, who went over 200 yards rushing, takes it in to seal it, 29-20. Portland with the victory in the Class B South Championship game after losing in this game a year ago. They got back going to the state championship game. The universe put us in the same situation that we were in last year in the rain versus Marshall. And I think, I mean, we don't want to feel the way we felt last year again. And I mean, it looked kind of shaky a little bit in the first half. But I mean, with my teammates behind me, being my backbone, lifting me up, keeping my head up, they gave me the strength I needed. What a finish for the Bulldogs. All right, the Northern Beach Championship, number four, Falcon, number one, Skowhegan. Navigators went up 6-0 on a Miles Gay fumble return for a score. And then the Falcon defense giving the Riverhawks offense that scored 66 points last week. Nowhere to go. Falcon turns to the air. Finn Caxton Smith to Lucas Dilworth deep into Skowhegan territory. Later, Indy Backman takes it in. And Falcon, do you believe this? Looking for the upset up 12 to nothing. Riverhawks start to move the ball now. Quincy McCray finds some space. Uses the blockers, 20 yard gain. Third and goal, Savage. <coughs> Sorry, I forgot my cough button. Adam Savage takes it in for the score, 12 6 game. In the third, Savage drives Skowhegan again on the fake give. He goes in, 14 12, Skowhegan at the half. In the third, Skowhegan's D line starts to make plays. Marshall Eastler stuffs the run. After a failed fourth and one at midfield, Skowhegan with good field position. Savage goes in for 22 yards out. 22 to, or 28 to 20, Skowhegan. Riverhawks go for their first title since 78. Now only two teams entered the weekend with unbeaten marks, Levitt and Oxford Hills. Levitt facing Cape tomorrow night. Oxford Hills, which has won the Class A, <coughs> excuse me, has worn the Class A crown since November of being the favorite, hosting Bonnie Eagle in the A semifinals. We go to South Paris, Vikings and Bonnie Eagle. Oxford Hills QB Eli Soren, Waits for the play to develop. Untouched into the end zone. The Fitzy candidate, two TDs running, three passing, over 200 yards. 29-0 at the half. The run defense was dominant. Allowed just nine yards rushing. Scott's trying to go to the air. Cam Barcelo to C.J. Cooper deep into Vikings territory. Then watch the Vikings linebacker, Owen Marr, number 19. Sits and waits. Here it comes. The deflection, and Marr is right there with a beautiful interception. All that was in doubt, the shutout. Grayson Foster seals it with the pick in the end zone on the last play of the game. 36 to nothing, Oxford Hills. Vikings at 10-0, heading back to the state final. Who would they face? The other matchup, number six, Sanford, coming off an upset over Lewiston at number two, Thornton Academy, the defending A champs. Opening Golden Trojans possession. Ryan O'Keefe back to pass. Adrian Zia gets him for the sack. TA gets it back, though, and O'Keefe, the swing pass to Carlos Eboli. He takes it all the way down to the Sanford eight yard line. From there, Hayden Whitney sees the hole, hits the hole, seven nothing Thornton. Similar script for TA on their next drive. O'Keefe swings it out to Eboli. He makes some guys miss, uses the blocks, 39 yard gain. He had about 150 yards receiving tonight. He was a weapon. And then who else but Whitney 
going in for the score, standing up. He had three touchdowns in the first half. Middle of the second, key play here. Watch the left side of your screen. Number 19, Mac Lowe, reads the swing pass, and he gone. The interception taking it back for the score. Sanford will get on the board late, but TA takes it 38-8. Kevin Kiesel's seventh trip to the finals in the last 10 seasons. They'll play Oxford Hills in the state game rematch next Saturday at Fitzpatrick Stadium. After starting the season 0-2, Lisbon settled into its identity and ran off wins in six of the next seven weeks. Tonight, the Hounds getting a matchup with a team that handed them a loss on opening night, Freeport. We go to Freeport, and the story of this one was the line play of the Lisbon Hounds. Freeport up 7-0, trying to put a drive together, but Landon DeWilt, Ethan Barabee, and Josh Carter combined for the stop. The offensive line, watch the push, and Josh Carter can just follow the blockers. Eight-yard gain. Another hole from the offensive line. Colby Lavasser rips through it. The Hounds in control on the ground, moving deep into Freeport territory. And then it's Carter capping the drive with a nine-yard touchdown run. Lisbon would deny Freeport at the goal line in the final minute to hold on for the 28-21 win. Lisbon going back to the state championship game for the first time since they went back-to-back -back in 05 and 06. Defending state champ Foxcroft hosting Winthrop. Monmouth. Winthrop Monmouth, that is. Ponies prevailed in a week one one-point thriller. Tonight, Caden Crocker was the man of the night. Two touchdowns in the first half, and now he intercepts the Ramblers. Winthrop's defense hoping to make a big stop, intercepting the Ponies in the end zone. But the Ponies ride on to victory. Kelmsley Marsters taking it to the house, and Foxcroft can celebrate. They're going back to the state championship game, looking to defend their title. They'll face Lisbon next weekend at at Cameron's Bangor or Bangor's Cameron Stadium, Foxcroft's only loss came to Lisbon. All right, Class C North Championship. Number two, Herman. Number one, Madomic Valley. Madomic Valley scored on its first two drives. Then Chase Peasley punches it in with 20 seconds left in the second quarter to give the Panthers a 20 to six lead at the half. Herman trying to climb back into it in the third. Going to the Philly special. Johnny Kokoska to Gary Glidden. The pitch to Bruce Coulter, who finds Kokopsa. All alone, same drive. Gary Glidden takes it in from nine yards out. 20 to 14, we have a game. But the Panthers answer. This is the only pass Madovic through the entire game. It was a beauty. Wyatt Simmons to a wide open. Blake Morrison, Panthers go right back up by two scores, 26 to 14. And then late in the fourth, Kakasa trying to throw. The screen pass is picked, Madovic. That's the dagger. Madomic Valley wins the Class C North Championship over Herman 40 to 20. They can celebrate tonight. And they'll play in the Class C State Championship game at Cameron Stadium in Bangor next weekend. All right, elsewhere, rather, also on tap this weekend, of course, the eight-man championships. They are good ones. Yarmouth, back in the championship game after a one-win season last year, will face Waterville. Waterville was in the state championship last year, got blown out by Chevrolet. So they are really going to be fired up for that one. That's at 11 o'clock tomorrow at Coney High School. Following that game at 2 o'clock, Old Orchard Beach, the second time that the Gulls have played in the eight-man championship. They are the four seed from the south. They take on the fifth seed from the north, Orono, as upsets prevail in the eight-man playoffs. Dean Plant's squad looking for their first state championship in forever. The Gulls in Orono, 2 o'clock. We'll have highlights of both of those tomorrow night on a late Blitz 8. And then, of course, the game of the weekend on paper, Cape Elizabeth and Levitt. Second straight year that they have played in the regional championship. That's 6 o'clock at Lewiston High School. Levitt lost in the championship last year on a last-second play. Then this year, Levitt beat Cape Elizabeth to get the home field in this game as they won on a last-second play. Looking forward to all of that tomorrow night. A great weekend of football. We'll have Gold Ball Saturday next weekend. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for hanging out. My voice hung on for long enough to finish it.